Hello. First off, I'd like to tell you a little personal story. A very long time ago, after saving my Saturday job wages for weeks on end, I bought myself a brand new ZX Spectrum. The graphics were blocky, the colour palette was limited and gaudy, and I wish I'd bought a VIC-20 instead. However, I now had a 48k Spectrum, and that was to be the start of my adventures in home computing. Over the next few years, I bought quite a lot of games, and there were a few standouts, like Attic Attack and Night Law from Ultimate, and I might even remake one of those in the future. But it was Manic Miner and its sequel Jet Set Willy that were the real standout games of the time, in my opinion, and those are the ones that stick in my memory the most. Manic Miner was written by a teenager called Matthew Smith, who was only maybe a year or two years older than me at the time. Apparently, he wrote the game in just eight weeks. It's taken me a lot longer than that. But interestingly, it was one of the first games on the spectrum to feature in-game music. Manic Miner is a platform game, and it's not the first platform game by any means. But it does boast 20 very unique levels, a very British Monty Python kind of humour, and challenging gameplay. It was fun to play, but it was frustrating when you lost, and there was no save games either. With this Manic Miner editor, I've tried to recreate the nostalgic feel of the Spectrum, well with the graphics at least. The audio, although still retro, is not based on the original game music and sound effects. It's generated through a chip emulator I wrote last year. That chip was used for a later Spectrum, the 128K Spectrum. Anyway, let's get on with the editor. Okay, the first thing we need to do is stop the air supply from running out, or we'll lose any changes we make. I better turn that music off too. The editor is split into three areas. The play area for the level is this window here. The game objects are highlighted here. Note there are two of every object apart from exits, and the game sprite area is over here. Down here we have some extra functions, one of which you've already seen. Let's change the colours of the default walls and platforms in the editing room. I click the first wall icon, B1, and now I cycle through the foreground colours, FG. The colours change automatically. I can also do the same for the wall's background colour. Next, the platform. Click on the first platform, P1, and change the colour. That's better. Let's save these changes by clicking S. The next thing I'll do is add an exit. I can click on the large exit icon here and click in the level editor to place it. Notice that the exit is now flashing. I can change the exit by clicking either the left or right mouse buttons to cycle through the other available exits. I'll quickly fill up the level by adding some more platforms and walls using the B1 and P1 options. Now I'll create some syncing platforms using S1. I think the name is pretty self-explanatory. Note that walls cannot be walked or jumped through by Minor Willy, but platforms and syncing platforms can. But once you land on a syncing platform, it's not going to be there for long. Next up are conveyors. I can create a conveyor by selecting C1 and then adding that to the play area. When Minor Willy lands on a conveyor, he will travel in the same direction the conveyor is moving. He can walk in the opposite direction if he lands on it and continues to move in that same direction. If I select the radio button here, the conveyor changes direction. Clockwise. And anti-clockwise. Let's add some collectible items to the level by selecting I1 and clicking in the main editor screen. Notice that the exit has stopped flashing now. 
the exit only becomes active when there are no items. Time to add some danger. Let's add some nasties to the level by selecting N1 or N2 and paste them into the level. A clash with these is fatal for Minor Willy. Extras E1 and E2 are not needed for this level. These are used for either decoration or special game events. The main use for E1 and E2 are the switches required for the Kong Beast levels. If enabled, the switches will make either the wall B2 disappear or the platform P2 disappear once they've been triggered. Now we come to the Guardian Sprites. There are two types of Guardian Sprite available per level, other than Willy. A level can have a maximum of eight Guardian Sprites and they can be of either type. To add a sprite, you select the type, change its colour to the one you want, and then click the starting point and ending point of the path you want it to travel in the main edit window. Once that is done, you can click on the sprite's number and choose to change a few things. Here you can change the sprite's speed, where the leftmost button is the fastest and the furthest right is the slowest. Right clicking the number will remove the sprite completely. And clicking this box just right of the slowest speed button will turn the animation on or off. This button here changes the background colour. That's pretty much it. Let's save this level, turn the music back on and test it out. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Here we go again. Oops. First item. Cleared. Second item, third item, fourth item, and last item. Time to get to the exit. Lucky I turned off the air supply. I've actually finished designing all of the original levels, so now I can show you what the P and the N options are for, but I'll turn the music off first. N cycles forward through the levels, and P cycles backwards through the levels. There were game features that I had to hard code into this editor as triggered events, primarily the two Kong Beast levels, the Skylab level, and the Solar Power Generator level. I wrote this editor in C++ using the GLFW and the Port Audio libraries. That's it! Many thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of my future projects. Bye now!